Like, if we're going to talk about paper, who's rightful for it, who's the best guy for it? Vittori went closer with Adesanya than his competitors for the number one contendership did. Closer than Whitaker, closer than Gaslam. Gaslam had a much more exciting fight to the point that it won fight of the year, not just fight of the night, it won fight of the night, fight of the whole year. So Kelvin's not without argument. Whitaker is not without the right to redeem himself after being perfect in his career. Vittori is not wrong to come out with the argument that I've won two main events now, stopping guys on very I short notice that I wasn't even prepared for. Oh, and by the way, I already beat you, at least according to one judge. From the brink respawns. I bring unrest when the seas have calmed. I am legend, I am fool. I am one of many, I am under no rule. I am peasant, I am loon, I'm disparaged, I'm consumed, I'm most certainly confused. Am I seeing something real or is it smoke? Am I on the ground or am I hung without a rope? And is this fantasy or from the dream have I awoke? Am I steady on the path or am I clinging on to hope? All we're talking about here is, can Marvin get offered the fight? Well, then you got to put yourself in Adesanya's shoes, because Adesanya's very unique. He's very unique. It's not like anybody else. Adesanya has not fought anybody in well over a year and a half that he didn't want to fight. I don't know of any other champion that has controlled his own career as much as Adesanya. So I keep harping back to the idea that you must get Adesanya's blessing. I would guess that Adesanya would like a little bit of parody, and I also brought that to you guys a week ago. I brought you that statement because I was looking at Vittori, I was looking at Whitaker, and I was looking at Kelvin, and I had forgot that Adesanya fought Vittori. I forgot it. So when I told you that I thought that Adesanya would like a little bit of parody and that that was good for Vittori, I forgot that they fought. Does that matter? Look, it appears to me that Adesanya's gonna have to start redoing fights in the quest for plenty know the paths of many right and then he's got to get Dana to listen he's got to get a whole lot of people to listen but he's shown that he's pretty good at getting people to listen so outside of Darren Till it still brings you back to the Paul Costas of the world who sat out and then it leaves you with Vittori I mean I would think that Marvin Vittori is in a really really good spot right now and Vittori did some stuff in that match that he didn't get credit for. A lot of the talk was not Vittori's takedown. Vittor Vittori's takedown was actually dialogue number two. Surprisingly and unfairly, the biggest talk coming out of that fight was Kevin Holland's inability to stop the takedown. That was talk number one. That was followed by a record-setting amount of takedowns by Vittori, which should have, in all fairness, been number one. But you still missed the fight. You still miss the championship rounds that Vittori pushed through with ever bit as much output as he did in round one and two. That is rare. And I understand where the audience won't always appreciate that. You expect your athletes, as long as they're on the field, to be in condition to go as long as the play is going. I'm just sharing with you in this sport, a lot of guys can. And Vittori proved that he can. Also, Vittori took some big shots, and it's a question of how did he handle those shots, or what did those shots do to him, and guess what, nothing. Some of you are disputing that he even took big shots right now. I know you are. Some of you are hearing that, no, Chael, he didn't take any big shots. Yes, he did. He took some really big shots. His knees just never buckled. He never backed up. He never showed it. He dealt with it, and he pushed forward. Vittori's a tough son of a bitch. I'll tell you right now. I mean, he is a tough, tough guy. And if we are to look forward to Vittori versus Adesanya, which if I was to give a prediction, and this is an all admittance, a recency bias, I would just have to look back to their first fight, which Vittori did a lot better on his feet than people thought he would do. And Vittori's takedowns were a lot better than people thought they were. Happy and sad, 
It's story time with two fucking idiots. No, yeah, you need to be able to. Has there ever been a job that you've had that you haven't just been awesome at it? Well, there was that oh time that we worked together that we were awesome at our job, but we were just like two and a half hours late every day. Okay. That is not our bad. fault. It's bad. Yeah, 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 it's it's not, really bad. It's it was not, bad. but we were, okay, awesome there was at the traffic job when we were there. There was traffic and I didn't wake up on time. How would you expect me to get there on time? Exactly. <laughs> like, Oh, there's no traffic at six 30 when I'm yeah. supposed to be driving to work. Yeah. Well, there is at nine 30 when I got out of bed. <laughs> And but I had anyways, to stop no. at a drive through on the way there because I was hungry. <laughs> and then it's I had been to stop at the gas hours. station to throw my garbage out because the garbage can was full. Exactly. Dude, we we, yes, were, we're good at we were good at that job, but we were the worst fucking employees mm, the worst. in the world. I literally got fake fired mm. by our boss. <laughs> to scare you into getting there on time. Right? <laughs> he, he called me out of the room and was just like, it was such a relaxed place. You know, it wasn't yeah. ever a big deal. And he was like, Hey man, can I talk to you? And I was like, sure. What's he going <laughs> to what? And he was like, he took a drag of his cigarette and he was like, you're fucking fired, man. And I was like, Oh, you mean 38 days in a row of being two and a half hours <laughs> late is going to actually impact my career here. Oh. And he, when I reacted like, like, wow, fuck. And he was like, well, you're not, but you're going to be but if you don't ship up or whatever. And I was like, yeah, wow, that wow. You got me because then they put me on like some sort of improvement plan. Yeah, where I had to come in at like at 10 or whatever, right or yeah, 10, whatever it was, less hours. Oh, it was so embarrassing, which was but, supposed to be a punishment. But <laughs> was, you're fucking 18. You didn't give a shit. You're like, oh, 10 and less hours a week. Perfect. Yeah, I actually had to come in an extra day because we oh. did the four 10 hour days. So I just did that, but That's I also right. didn't have to do any of like the cleaning and stuff. So yeah. it was like, it's a part of the job we didn't like anyway. Yeah. And then the worst part is we'd be two hours late, right? We'd yeah. get there at nine. The farm would open at 10 and at nine 55, instead of like getting ready to take the train or whatever we were supposed to do, we'd be like, Hey, we're going to run over and get salad bar. <laughs> and they're like, we still are cleaning. And we're like, yeah, but we open soon. So we're going to go. <laughs> We're going to have a pre lunch of work. Yeah, exactly. Like, dude, I think the worst thing about us is not only that we were several hours late multiple times a week yep. is the fact that when other people that we worked with who were counting on us to be there, mm -hmm. when they ended up becoming frustrated with our lazy dumbass, yep. we had the balls to be like, why are they so mad? Like, God, oh. get over it. Like we're get here over it. Yeah. <laughs> we're here now okay yeah we're here Gosh. i'm working god you're lucky i even showed up <laughs> god we were the worst dude and we've never had that problem at any other place well yeah it, it's just because <laughs> it was so relaxed and the traffic bro the and traffic. the traffic <laughs> <laughs> honestly though the we both had to do like a similar route to get to that yeah. job and once you got to a certain point, there was just construction every single day of the year in this one area. And it was always just like one lane. And then I had like a few flat tires and yep. like, just, I hit a pothole or two. Like it was just a nightmare, but are you that just was... naming, are you just naming the excuses that weren't real? And then your fucking, your grandma got punched in the face or something. Yeah. Yeah. The <laughs> gorilla. Even... The gorilla broke loose from the oh, zoo. From the zoo. He got Rest him. Rest in peace, Harambe. Um...